mean FCIB in absentia. I mean, also recognize the uh, the registrar CEO, Mr. Sheye Awojobi, PhD FCIB. Then the branch chairman of CIB Lagos State branch, Mr. Peter Ashade, FCIB is in absentia. The first vice chairman, Mr. Adeyemo Adewi, FCIB, is in, is, in the, is in our midst here. They also have the chairman of the Education Subcommittee, that's the person of Mr. Kinsley Kendi, ADBC FCIB. Then the people from the National Secretariat, I recognize Mrs. Linda Daniel, FCIB, Mabel Okwaifi, and then Moshud. You're all welcome. We also recognize all ESCO members in the midst. Uh, the treasurer of the CIBN Lagos branch, the person of Mr. Robert Inaji. You are welcome here. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, the next on our agenda now is for the chairman's opening opening speech. And this will be handled by the first vice chairman of the of Lagos State branch, the person of Mr. Adeyemo Adeoye, FCIB. You are highly welcome, sir. All right, so uh, good morning, everyone. I was initially muted, so I was trying to unmute myself. Okay, sir. Um, good morning, everyone. And um, nice to see that we have about over 60 people already on the platform at this particular time. So it's quite um, encouraging on a Saturday when people are supposed to be taking their So it means that this, is, this topic is very, very important. And we appreciate all the students and the uh, subject matter experts that are uh, here at the moment uh, for prioritizing uh, this very important part of the institute's uh, function. Thank you. So good morning to all participants and welcome to this important webinar. Um, since 1963, when the CIBN started as a local chapter of um, Institute of Bankers in London, its relevance in the Nigerian financial services industry has continually grown over the years. In the nation's banking industry, the institute sets standards for knowledge and skill acquisition, ensures maintenance of ethical and professional standards, conducts exams to build capacity, which is very, very important to the relevance of the banking industry in Nigeria. So the institute is, plays a very pivotal role in the functioning and the relevance of Nigeria's banking system. In order to ensure that capacity building and certification in the banking industry meets global standards because, I mean, the last 10, 20 years, globalization has taken over a lot of um, um, sectors across the world. And this of bankers has continually stepped up the game when it comes to ensuring that Nigerian banking industry's cap um, capacity building meets global standards. This was examination syllabus and uh, examinations and syllabus has continually been updated and upgraded to meet global standards. I can, I will take you back to about 24 years ago or so, or so ago, I think it was 1998, when we were, just to let you know that this is not new, when we were about writing our final exams, there's one, there was about two or three notorious um, papers, if you allow me to use that word, uh, those ones that we consider as students when we're writing our final exam, then uh, they, were, they were practice of banking one and practice of banking two. I think it was around 1997, 1998, we understand that they still wanted to change to, to match, to change labels and then make practice of banking to be one. It was difficult because some people have already written practice of banking one. And if you, if you had written an exam, those, they were actually a very um, challenging papers. All of a sudden, the syllabus were to be changed in consonance with the need to upgrade and meet global standard at that time, because the Institute of Bankers has always been a pivotal institute when it comes to ensuring that our examination syllabus meets global standard. It was much to price of banking a single paper. It was challenging then, but it was something that we thought was 
was challenging, but we found out that it was eventually beneficial to us. I wrote prices of banking before I eventually qualified in 1999. So it was difficult, but it was challenging, but it is something that it has to do in order to ensure that our certification meets global standard. So this webinar is to enable the Institute, provide clarity around the new syllabus for better appreciation. And in this same webinar, critical subject matter experts and stakeholders have been assembled to do this. I want to encourage you to please pay maximum attention, ask all the questions because you have the critical stakeholders and subject matter experts in this space. So I wish you the best in your examinations and in your careers as you continue on this journey. So in order not to take your time, I'll hand over the platform to people who will continue and the webinar. Thank you so very much for listening. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. For the brief uh, speech, sir. We really appreciate you, sir. Thank you. On our next agenda, that's the role of CIBN in education and skill acquisition, which should be handled by the chairman of education subcommittee, the person of Mr. Kingsley Kennedy at DBC. Mr. DBC, you're highly welcome, sir. Hello, Mr. DBC. Sorry, yeah, yes. I'm having a problem with unmuting myself. I've done that now. Okay, sir. You're welcome, sir. All right. Good morning, all. My name is Kingsley Kendi Adibis, I said. And um, I'm to take over from where the chairman stopped. Uh, this is about the role of CIBN in knowledge and skill acquisition. I appreciate the fact that the vice chairman has been able to go through the annals of the Institute of Bankers from 1963. However, I'm taking up from the three pillars of the Institute, one, which is to control entry into the banking profession, two, to set standard for bankers to maintain professional ethics, and the third one is to maintain professional ethics. These are things that the Times of Bankers of Nigeria you know, are doing that are not mutually exclusive. So they are complementary in nature. So in the aspect of controlling entry into the banking examination, it's just to ensure that we have quality of people entering into the banking industry in terms of academic and professional background. And this is part of the things that the Institute is doing, facilitating skill acquisition and also acquiring of knowledge. In the aspect of setting standard for bankers to maintain professional ethics is to set standard in terms of positional placement, taking cognizance of experience and maturity in handling key positions. I remember in 2006, there was uh, a kind of, uh, uh, there was a kind of instruction from the Central Bank, uh, from the Federal Institute of Bankers, stating that to get to a particular position in the banking in industry, then one must have gone through about 10 years experience in operations. So this forms part of the standard that the Institute of Bankers have been trying to maintain to ensure we, there is professional standard for whoever is acquiring or whoever is getting into a particular position. Also, for professional training and skill acquisition to meet contemporary realities, like we are here today to talk about. In setting the standard also, 
is to update members with adequate information that can help from time to time for members in their developmental growth. It is also to conduct professional examination and certify successful candidates in their de developmental growth. Furthermore, as part of what the CBN to do in terms of certain standards is to work harmoniously with the Central Bank of Nigeria in policy formulation that will strengthen the uh, the bankers of the banking landscape in Nigeria, because I'm aware that the policy of 2006 I mentioned about was a kind of collaboration between the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Chartered Institute of Bankers to bring out that policy of ensuring who gets to what particular level and who has a particular level of experience. And as I said, especially in operations, which will be around 10 years. Having said this, the other aspect of the pillar is to ensure the maintenance of professional ethics, that is ensuring strict discipline by in terms of our conduct of members so that the way we act in the banking hall and the, work, the way we act outside is in terms with the lines of the talents of bankers. Then also to conduct ourselves professionally so that our fiduciary relationship with, with customers and clients is not at any point in time called to test. We should also behave in such a manner to, ma to maintain and sustain the integrity of the Institute itself at all times. So these are the pillars. Now bringing that pillars into what we have to do today, which is the uh, bridging gap and also skill acquisition, is the main core, which you have to do without initially addressing the three pillars I've just mentioned. So number one, the rule, I mean, the, the role in the knowledge acquisition for the Charter Institute of Bankers is coming through the registration of people for membership and student membership of the Institute so that they can take the professional examination and get certification. To ensure this is done, the Institute has a kind of faculty in place to move the training and research functions of the Institute to a higher level. So the faculty assists in harvesting new ideas and value addition. And in getting this value addition, what they do is setting the knowledge and the competency standard for all members of the Institute and also banking industry in general. Added to it, in terms of the faculty, is reviewing and updating the criteria for accreditation and selection of providers of CIB and certified training programs. They are also in keeping a watch brief on issues which affect education and professional development of banking professionals. These are some, some of the things that they are putting in place to provide possible impact you know, here in Nigeria, as it is also you know, moving on in the whole world. They are also helping in the leadership and management of the Institute to develop an agenda and mode of advocacy in areas affecting members' education and development. So in addition to all these by the faculty, the members of the faculty are also expected to actively engage in one, a kind of curriculum de development and also teaching. This will involve delivering lectures at CIBN organized education and professional development events. Also, as part of getting involved, is the visiting to university campuses to speak with undergraduates so as to register for the CIBN examinations and courses. They are also to design and monitor 
a kind of experience sharing and mentoring program for the, Cent for the Chartered Institute of Bankers. They also are involved in the determination research needs and creating framework for encouraging research and investigation into issues in their specific areas. The faculty also, which I have mentioned about, is to disseminate and also bring up a kind of publication of research outcomes, irrespective of whether it is arising from CIBN sponsored research. And furthermore, for the deployment of research output in the advocacy and curriculum development, these are what the faculty of the Institute are doing to assist in the gap, knowledge gap, and also skill acquisition of members of people involved in the banking profession in Nigeria so that we can take it to a higher level. That's the objective of this faculty arrangement are like this. One, the objective is to assist in the development of curricula of the various CIBN education programs, which is to affect or impact positively on skill acquisition of members. Also, it is to assist in redesigning the CIBN training programs especially in the continuing compulsory development programs, which we know as our CCDP. This has been a kind of measure of participation of members, people that have qualified to know to the level at which they have improved themselves from time to time. It's not a matter of getting the certificate and sitting at home without further developing yourself. So that is the essence of the continuing compulsory development program, which has been on over a period of years. They are also to assist in implementing the human capital development, the, the human capital development of the FSS 20, year 2022, as it concerns the Chartered Institute of Bankers. That is one of the objectives from the faculty too. Furthermore, the faculty is also to assist in the research activities of the Institute with a view to adding value to banking operations in the Nigerian economy. These are the aspects of the objectives of the training program, which the faculty will always put in place to ensure that the, CB, the CIBN is performing its role, its role actively to ensure that knowledge gap and skill acquisition is always being addressed as much as possible. Going further is the aspect of knowledge and skill acquisition that has brought us here today. Because at the 54th edition of the annual Bankers Dinner, the then president, Dr. Uche Ulobu, was saying categorically that the issue of banking professional examination certification program, that there was the need for a new syllabus. And that syllabus, as at that time, which today is now in place, is to help to nurture a strong pipeline of talent and deepening skills in workplace to support continued transformation of the industry so that it can stay so viable and also achieve competitive growth. That exactly was the speech of the president of the Institute then. So in other words, the purpose of being here today to discuss about the new syllabus is part of the agenda, is part of the role to ensure that from time to time with global practice that we all need to be part, we have to ensure that the syllabus is well equipped so that we can, as part of the entire whole, also perform our duties and ensure that we have a very strong and virile banking landscape. Finally, also at the relaunching of the Institute Mentoring Program Mentoring Scheme, the present president also mentioned 
that the issue of mentoring is key in skill acquisition. In other words, that it is to ensure that we professionals, we are mentored in such a way that the scheme will transform every mind, both of the young and all professionals, so that everybody will have a kind of skill enhancement. And as at, as at this moment, we have about over 600 mentees that the Institute is handling to ensure that from time to time they are in contact with these mentees and ensure that everybody is well prepared for the global transformation of the banking landscape. And that we here in Nigeria, we cannot be left behind, except that we have to ensure that mentoring people, mentoring young ones, mentoring the millennials, and ensuring that they are also able to be brought up to date to ensure that at the end of the day, skill acquisition and this knowledge gap is closed up. So as we gather here this morning, I want us to note that the role of the challenges of bankers in skill acquisition and also bridging the knowledge gap is a thing that has been in place and a thing that will continue from time to time to be reviewed, to be evaluated, and also to have a kind of review to ensure that we are always in place and we are not behind in every global practice. So as we are here this morning, try as much as possible to ask questions where you feel you have problems and you can be sure that there will be elucidation in terms of what you lack. And at the end of the day, by the time you are leaving this place, you'll be well equipped. I want to thank everybody for listening to me and I wish us a very sound deliberation at the end of the program. Thank you very much, sir. The Mr. Kindy Kinsler DBC. We really appreciate you, sir. Okay, uh, before we move to the next agenda, which is the significance of the new syllabus, I believe we all uh, learn one or two things from what the chairman of education subcommittee said in respect of the role of CIBN in education and skill acquisition. We all, we can, with this one, we can all believe that CIBN with the new syllabus they are doing is just for the benefit of everybody. And with the complaint we have been having from students, I believe with this uh, webinar now, a lot of questions, unanswered questions will be answered. So that is why we will now take us to the next agenda, which is the significance of the new syllabus, which will be handled by Mrs. Linda Daniel, FCIB. Linda Daniel, she's one of the, she's, she works with the National Sector, CIB and National Secretariat. She's, she's in the capacity building and they're actually the one in charge of the all these uh, issues of the of the new syllabus. So let's listen to her and our team so that we can gain a lot of things. Thank you very much. Linda, you are highly welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. I welcome you all to this um, gathering, to this um, lecture. Uh, for me to commence, I will be taking uh, the significance of the syllabus, and I'll also be doing with the other, we're also going to be completing all the other lectures along with my team members. So if you permit me, I'd like to share my screen for this to commence. You're highly welcome. Okay. Now, the new, uh, for this uh, program, Bridging Knowledge Gap on Professional, on professional Skills. Um, for today, we will be looking at what the syllabus is all about and its significance. 
we'll be looking at the significance of the syllabus. We'll be looking into how, what the, uh, the old syllabus, how to map the old to the new. And we'll also be looking at the criteria in terms of registration for examination, for exemption before the exams. The new syllabus, as an introduction, I'd like to inform that the syllabus is usually uh, reviewed every five years. And this is in line with policy because we want to ensure that all, all our, our members writing their examinations are still doing courses, having, having uh, learnings that are in line with the current trends in the industry. The syllabus itself, is a total revamp. It's a total revamp of the old one because it's 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 totally revamped both in structure and in content. Uh, because we are we're expecting to re revolutionize the banking and finance industry in Nigeria and the whole of Africa. This the new syllabus has been created in form of modules, and this is essentially to ensure that our, our candidates are equipped with improved knowledge and skills required to work effectively on their job roles in the industry. It is also to ensure that our global practices are actually, I mean, our, our syllabus is actually standardized with global practices, that it can also, you know, compete globally, especially uh, with our counterparts outside Nigeria, in fact, in the whole world. And that's part of the reason why uh, in, the, in the development, in the review of our syllabus, not only did we just do it internally, but we ensured that we had a survey before this was actually developed. A, practical, a practice analysis survey was conducted to determine skills and competencies required by the chartered banker of today. We went further to ensure just to add value, we went, we went further to pass it through one of the big four uh, consulting firms, which is PwC Nigeria. They were engaged to develop the contents, you know, take leveraging on their expertise and their connections with the, inter with the uh, in international global standards. Now the syllabus itself, the structure itself has been changed, although, it still remains with its three levels of um, its three level of um, achievement. We still have our diploma level, inter intermediate professional level, and chartered banker level. But the key highlight on the new syllabus now is the experiential learning model, which comes on the final level. However, candidates will not be privy to this until they have completed the first three levels. And the key highlight happens to the experiential learning model, which is an, it's an online interactive model. It's, it's compulsory and it actually seeks to test the acquisition of technical skills, competence, and understanding of all learning from the first to the third level. It's synchronized and given, put in scenario form so that when candidates go through it, we are, what, we, what we're actually doing is testing their practicability of all they have learned from scratch to see if they actually understood the basics, if they actually understood the strategies involved, and if they can actually put this to play in, on their roles, at their job, um, at their, on their job roles. So on the first level, we have four modules as um, highlighted on the screen. Same on the second and on the third, which is the chartered banker level. However, we also have eight, um, eight um, elective courses there, in which the student should must write at least one, write and pass at least one of them. Now, one other significant thing about the new structure is that it also incorporates a learning um, outcome that is expected of them. For the diploma level, you know, the diploma level focuses on foundation, the basics, the understanding of the financial services itself, which will enable 
them, those on that level, to work efficiently at an operational level. While we already know the practitioners who take these exams have, have a basic education, you know, but the institute still play, try, wants to play its role, you know, of giving the professional touch when doing the exams. So it's designed for that basic level for them to be able to acquire, you know, professional skills on their job. Then the intermediate level has to do with a link from the operational to the strategic aspects of their jobs. Structure to provide a deeper knowledge into the banking industry. Uh, and this will be achieved by providing candidates with necessary managerial skills to become high professionals. However, it also ensures, it identifies and ensures that they, they are able to identify and manage risks, make plans to manage these risks and, in, and then increase their managerial skills on their jobs. So for someone who has reached the intermediate level, this is expected of him in his workplace. Now for the next level, which is the chartered banker level, the candidates here is, is focusing on expertise. Candidates build their expertise in this particular area because this area now equips candidates with the required knowledge and skills to take on higher managerial and leadership skills. It's structured to, for candidates to be, to ensure that once they reach this, they are able to know that it's not just about being an operational staff, but it's also to have that strategic outlook to become a fully uh, shattered banker. So the learning outcomes for these three levels is what is tested here. I mean, it's what is tested here. And the I mean, the learning um, the, uh, uh, objectives is what is tested here. And so these are the outcomes that we expect to get from there. Now, to, I have spoken a bit about this. Uh, I said that the learning, experiential learning model, of course, I said it's at the, at the last level, uh, but no candidates can, can write this. And this will be, um, will be brought out to, I mean, will be, this, if, if candidates will be informed about this particular level upon completion of the other levels at a particular time. Uh, it's, not, it's not usually on the timetable, so this will not be you know, seen on the timetable. It's something we will inform them. Now, I'd like to explain more on what's new about this syllabus. For now, first, I must say that it aligns with the skill requirements of the competence, competency framework, which I must tell you that is, has to do with the mandate of the, comp of the CDN, the competency framework that was, um, that was uh, developed and mandated CIBN to ensure that the four required skills are being, you know, are being uh, incorporated into whatever trainings and learnings that we disburse to our candidates. It has to do with the digital skills, the soft skills, and the technical skills. Considering the uh, current trends, the, the, the disruptions in the industry now, due to the techn technological advancements, so this has changed the landscape of banking. And so we must not um, behave as though we don't know this. And so this is where the digital skills come in. The soft skills has to do with relationship, interpersonal relationship with both your internal staff, your colleagues, and the customers. And that's why we have some courses which relates to these uh, within it. That's why we now have the course called customer service and relationship management. It's part of the soft skills. Then we have the technical skills, which is mostly the basics, the operational level. All these wrapped around ethics, professionalism, and compliance. Because without integrity in the industry, then all these coming together, no, no integrity, no, um, no innovation, no, um, no uh, having to be sure that everything you do is correct, then it comes to nothing. So these skills must be wrapped around ethics, professionalism, and compliance skills as well. So we also know that what is new about our syllabus is that it combines global standard with local content. It's also, it also has the inclusion of the experiential learning, which was not in the old syllabus. It has a strong emphasis on ethics and sustainable banking. 
which we all know is now the, one of the current trends in the industry, that is sustainable banking. It also addresses the current market and employers, as well as reflects the anticipated future skills requirements. It, changed, it has changed for sure from subject to modular system. And when we say it's now in the modular system, we're referring to the content now. The content is broader, both in knowledge and in skills that will be acquired. It's different from the subject by subject basis because the modular system now, most of the subjects are within a particular module because we have seen that there's an interplay between them. And for us to get full value for this, we have put them together to test how our, our, our candidates interrelate with these subjects and see that they all relate with each other to bring out a particular outcome. We also have the inclusion of learning outcomes, uh, which I mentioned earlier for each of the level of the examinations. It's futuristic for sure, provided for emerging issues and infusion of digital skills. We also have a tie to each of the modules percentage width for skills specification to guide the proportion of the study time. Yes, and this also goes a long way in ensuring the level of, um, uh, of a, a, a examination timing, because we know that there are some particular courses and topics that need deeper knowledge and broader um, experience. It also has a, a change of the total number of courses per level. For example, in the old syllabus, in the diploma level, we had eight. Then in the intermediate, we had six, and in the chartered, we had five. But now we have four in each level with one cost that would at least one minimum, one uh, minimum um, of one uh, module that should be taken at the chartered level, which means we have a total of 13 that must be taken by a student. Now, aside from the ACI, those are the banking professional courses, mostly what I was speaking about. We also have the certification as part of our syllabus that has been improved, has been reviewed. We have our certification courses, 17 in number, as um, highlighted on the screen. We have the microfinance, which was there before, which has also been reviewed about uh, two or three years ago. We now have the banking law, regulation and supervision, retail banking, certified risk manager reporting and compliance, sustainable banking, De deposit insurance, digital banking, non-interest banking, banking operations, ethics and corporate governance, corporate banking, corporate and development finance, financial markets. One of the major new causes here is the e-payment certification and the public sector finance. These causes came as one of the outcomes of our, uh, our you know, interaction with our stakeholders who explained and insisted that these courses should be part of our certifications as they, see they are all relevant to the industry at the moment. And so we always listen to our stakeholders, especially when they speak what is actually going on in the industry. And so this has also been included as part of our certification. The examination structure, as I mentioned earlier, remains as it is, however, in the old syllabus, we had four compulsory courses, which we still do. However, the name is not because it has been reviewed and um, it has been repackaged. We now have it as finance in the global market, lending and credit management, applied banking, bank management and strategy. And so questions uh, we in this, in this regard for all the subjects, we will be testing knowledge, comprehension, and application of the knowledge. The questions for this examination now have been increased from what it used to be. It used to be 50, but it's now 100 multiple choice questions and short answer questions drawn from all the sections in the syllabi and all those that are under the particular module for each uh, module. The four core modules, however, remain a structure of theory and case study questions. This applies for both the banking certification, banking uh, professional examination, which leads to the ACIB, the associateship of the Institute, and also the certification courses. The timing is now uh, for the core courses is 180 minutes. 
which is three hours, while the other courses are one and a half hours. Now, for this, I will have to now, the next thing we'd like to speak about would be how we can map the old to the new. And for this, I have uh, my colleague, Mabel Okpaifi, who is actually the head student affairs, will be able, will be taking us on this. She'll be taking us through the mapping, how it connects with you know, the old syllabus. So please, I'd like to hand over now to my colleague, Mabel, to take us through that. Thank you. Mabel? Mabel? Hello? Hello, good morning, everyone. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, is, is a, can you hear me clearly, please? We can hear you. Yes, yes Mabel, we can hear you. Okay, apologies. I, I actually joined with two devices, so I see that there was an echo at the background. Thank you so very much for joining. My name is Mabel Okbefi, and um, um, Mrs. Linda Daniel, SCIV, thank you for that very wonderful presentation. So I'll go on to explaining the next, she's sharing the screen now. So I'll go on to explaining how you can map from the old syllabus to the new syllabus. The first thing I'd like to mention is this. The change in syllabus was not designed to make candidates or student members write so much irrelevant courses. I say irrelevant because people would, would say, um, why is it that I have to write this course? I see it as irrelevant because I have taken it before. All the courses, all the modules on the new syllabus have been enriched. So what that means is where you have um, something bordering on ethics, corporate governance, any module bordering on that, you rest assured that the content has been enriched and it is not anywhere close to what you had written before. So the Institute would not let you duplicate your effort, write a subject or a course that you have written before. Now, just go straight into this because um, I want it to be very clear. And then the chat box, please. If you have any question while on the call, this is a wonderful opportunity to share your questions. Just share your question. If there are clarifications you need, kindly share it on the chat box. Um, so I'm just waiting for the screen to come up. But while at it, I'd like to mention that an important document you need for mapping the old syllabus to the new syllabus is your statement of results. And I'll tell you why. The statement of results contains all the subjects and modules that you have written in the past or gotten exemption from. Now, some people mistake exemption from applying. They say, I apply for exemption. Applying does not mean you have gotten exemption. You need to have gotten a communication that the exemption have been processed and you made payment for it. We have cases in the past where people would just apply or possibly send a mail requesting for exem exemption and assume that they have gotten exemption in those courses. Now, the statement of results makes it very clear for you to see the courses you have written in the past. Whenever you wrote the courses, it will show you when you wrote those courses and the grade. It would also show you the courses that you have applied and gotten exemption on. Okay, so I'll move on to, from the screen, we can see conversion from the old to the new banking professional examination syllabus. And we've broken it into different categories so that we can fully cover all the student members involved. One, category A, which has to do with mapping of the old subjects, the new modules of the banking professional examination syllabus. This is the general mapping. Now, what you do is with your syllab statement of results, if you don't have your statement of results, if you have a list of all the subjects you have written and passed, 
and all the subjects you have gotten exemption on, you have it on one side. Then the next thing you look at the new syllabus. From what we have here, the, there are four modules under the diploma level. Now, if on your statement of results, you have elements of banking, basic economics, accounting and business finance. It means that you will not be required to write module one, which is the economics of banking and finance. So let's make this practical, like a very practical scenario. You have the two documents beside you, a list of all the new syllabus courses, starting from diploma, intermediate, down to chartered banker and uh, chartered banker core courses, and then the elective. And then you're ticking, we're canceling here. So where you have elements of banking, basic economics, accounting and business finance on your statement of result, it means you're not writing economics of banking and finance. It, then we move on to the next model. Where you have fundamentals of marketing or marketing of financial services on your statement of result, it means that you are not going to write customer service and relationship management. What this means is that we have looked at the content of the courses and confirmed that they align with the courses we are converting them with. So if you have written elements of banking, I start from beginning again, just for clarity. If you have written elements of banking, basic economics, accounting and business finance, you would not be required to write economics of banking and finance. So we move to the next level. If you've written fundamentals of marketing, marketing of financial services, you will also not be required to write the customer service and relationship management. Then I move on to the next leg. If you've written business law or business law, banking law, ethics and corporate governance, is a combination here. If you have a combination of business law and banking law and corporate governance, you would not be required to write banking law and regulation. Or if you have a combination of business law and banking regulation and supervision, you won't be required to write that module. So we'll move on to the fourth, which is ethics, corporate governance, and professionalism. If you have written in the past, banking law, ethics, and corporate governance, you would not be required to write this module. And so we're done with the diploma level. Please drop your question in the chat box. I'll take them. So if you have mapped out these courses, you have them on your statement, it means you don't have anything to do with the diploma level. Then we move on to the intermediate. Sorry, it's not clear. Okay, yes, module one. Now we have digital banking. Going by what we currently, what we had in our old syllabus or what we had done in the past, there is no subject that are completely aligns with digital banking. So regardless of what you have in your statement of results, this is a general thing. Of course, like I mentioned in the beginning, we have different categories. I'll go on to the other categories. So if you don't, what it means is that you would be required to write digital banking. That's why you have new there. This document will be shared with all participants on this call. We'll share it with CIV and Lagos branch. Then we move on to module two, enterprise risk management. If you had written principles and practice of risk management in the past, you have it in your statement of results, you won't be required to write it again. We move on to FinTech. From our documents, there is no module that completely covers the content of fintech. Therefore, you would be required to write fintech. That's why you have new there. Then we move on to finance in the global market. Now, finance in the global market is a core course. However, if you have written international trade and finance before now, it means that you would not be required to write module four, which is finance in the global market. Then we move on to the charter banker level. From the charter banker level, if you have written corporate financial management, you won't be required to write module one of the chartered banker level, which is corporate financial services. Then we move on to module two, which is bank management and strategy. Now, if you have written strategic management and leadership and banking law, ethics and corporate governance, you would not be required to write 
Model 2 again, which is the bank management and strategy. Recall that bank management and strategy is one of the core courses. We move on to lending and credit management. If you have written bank lending and credit management and it appears on your statement of results, you passed it. Not just that you have written it, you wrote it and you passed. You would not be required to write it again. We move on to applied banking. Applied banking is also a core course. If you had written practice of banking in the past and you passed, you would not be required to write applied banking. Then we move on to the electives. There are a number of electives. The, the electives are this step here. If you can see the screen, you, you'll be able to read the electives from there. Now, if you have written an elective in the past, like human resource, uh, human capital management, you will not be required to write an elective again because that translates to the human resource management. However, if you've not taken human resource management, sorry, human capital management in the past, you will be required to write, take any of the electives. We also have one of the electives of central banking and co central banking and deposit insurance system. If in the past you've taken banking regulation and supervision and financial economics, you would not be required to take an additional elective. What I'm doing now is category A, mapping it subject by subject, which you can do on your own. You don't need anybody to assist you to do this. You can do it on your own. If you have your statement of results and the syllabus, which is available on the CIBN website, you can do the mapping yourself. The last stage, which is the experiential learning module, I need to throw more light on this. You cannot combine the experiential learning module with other modules. That is to say, if you have two subjects, two modules left, you won't say, I want to combine the two modules with the experiential learning module. The experiential learning module is the last module after you have completed the other theoretical modules. You have completed the diploma, you have completed the intermediate, you have completed the chartered banker level. It's going to be in the form of gamification. So all those who have completed will be informed that you have completed, therefore you are eligible to take the final stage, which is the experiential learning module, and then they will take it. So it is not something you can combine with the other modules. It's the last stage, is going to be we are using a gamification such that you do it at your own from your own end. It's not going to be um, the exam structure of logging in and finishing in 60 minutes or so. No, it's a different structure. We'll share that with all those who qualify for it. By qualify, I mean all those who complete the exams after the April 2022 would be informed that they are eligible for the experiential and then they will take the experiential before their induction. So this explains the first category. Now, we are aware that there are candidates that have one subject left to qualify in the chartered banker level using the old syllabus. There are candidates that have one subject left to qualify. And so we have created some level of exemption for them. This category B applies to them. If you have one subject left in the chartered banker level, not one subject left in your diploma level, not one subject left in any other level. This category B applies to those who have one left in the chartered banker level. And how do you know if you have one left in the chartered banker level? You have to check your statement of results. Your statement of results will show and confirm that you have completed the diploma, you have completed the, completed the intermediate, and now you have just one subject left. Now, that subject left we're referring to is the core subject, which is the banking law, ethics, and corporate governance, international trade and finance, the practice of banking, and we have the bank, banking, bank, we have the BLCA, which we also show on this screen. Now for ITF, if you know that you have only ITF left, only ITF left, you would not be required to write any subjects in the diploma level. 
you would also be required to write fintech in the intermediate level and finance in the global markets. Under the charter banker level, you won't be required to write anything, but you then have to take the experiential learning module. So in essence, what that means is that you're taking only two modules, two additional modules, and then taking the experiential learning module. That's for ITF. If you have only ITF left, if you have only banking law, ethics, and corporate governance left, you would then have to write banking law and regulation. If you've written banking regulation and supervision under the old syllabus, you won't be required to write this model three. But if you've not written banking law and banking, regulation and supervision under the old syllabus, then you have to take banking law and regulation because banking law and regulation and ethics, corporate governance and professionalism come together to make the course banking law, ethics and corporate governance. So you will then be required to write ethics, corporate governance and professionalism under the diploma level. Then on the intermediate professional level, you'll be right, required to write FinTech. And then we have experiential learning module. Like I mentioned, experiential learning module is compulsory for all those who complete the exam from April, 2022. So regardless of the number of subjects you have to write, once you complete the diploma, the intermediate and the charter banker level, you are eligible for writing experiential learning module. It is not a module that you can get exemption on. It is compulsory. It's a fusion of the, inter the diploma, the intermediate, and the chartered banker level. Okay, so we move on to bank lending and credit administration. If you have only bank lending and credit administration, you will be required to write FinTech. FinTech is under the intermediate professional level. You won't need to write any course under diploma level. Then you also need to write lending and credit management under the chartered banker level. Again, you also have to write experiential learning model. I'll move on to practice of banking. If you have only practice of banking, please note that this category B applies for people who have just one, not this and a combination of another. If you find out that you have practice of banking and possibly another course in intermediate, it doesn't apply to you. You can't say, okay, I'll take the subjects under this and go and pick. No, it doesn't apply that way. If you have only one. Now, under practice of banking, you also have to write applied banking, fintech, and then the experiential learning model. I move on to MFI. If you have only MFI left, you have to write. I want the screen to. You have to write. Please, can you scroll down, please? You have to write fintech. Okay, sorry, I'm just going through this. You have to write FinTech. Oh. Okay, I'll use, I'll use mine. You would, then, you would then need to write FinTech because there's nothing related to FinTech that you would have taken in the past. Then you also have to write bank management and strategy under the chartered banker level. And then again, the experiential learning model. So that explains those who have one core subject left to complete. That is for the category I just explained. Now we move on to candidates who have one elective to complete. It means that they have finished the diploma from the old syllabus, they finished the intermediate, they finished the chartered banker level, it's left with the chartered banker elective that they've not taken a subject yet. So for those who have not written any of the subjects, they will then be required to write FinTech, and one of the electives, we have eight electives there, they will be required to write FinTech and one of the electives. And then of course, like I mentioned earlier, they would also need to go through the experiential learning model. And so we move on to another set of student members that have a different exemption. That is for candidates who have one subject yet to complete in the intermediate professional level. Remember that the first one I mentioned was for those who are yet to complete in the core, the charter banker level focused on the four core courses. That's why we have ITF appearing in that category. 
This category C, for those who have one subject yet to complete under the intermediate professional level. Now, for those who have completed all the examinations except strategic management and leadership, they will be required to write FinTech and bank management and strategy alongside the experiential learning model. For those who have CFM, they are yet to write the corporate financial management. They are required to write FinTech as well as corporate financial services. For those who have marketing or financial services, they will be required to write customer service and relationship management, FinTech, as well as experiential learning model. For those who have FMA or financial economics left to write, they will be required to write FinTech, central banking or deposit insurance, as well as the experiential learning model. For those who have marketing or financial services, for those who have, sorry, it's taking, okay, so for, so for those who have financial and management accounting or financial economics, you'll be right, required to write FinTech, which is under the intermediate professional level and central banking slash deposit insurance. Of course, I mentioned that the experiential learning model is a compulsory online interactive model for those who have completed the first three levels of the banking professional examination to be eligible for the award of the associateship qualification. So regardless of how many modules you have left, as soon as you complete either in April or in October going forward, you would be required to go through the experiential learning model. I need to make it clear that those who have two or more outstanding subjects, you need to use the first table that I mentioned to confirm and get clarity on the subjects you have previously passed or gotten exemption on, you need to get your statement of results, which is available online. Now I'll move on to, because we have limited time and I'm trying not to stretch, I'll just quickly look at the questions and see if it is something we can take now or would be responding to you on the chat box. So be right assured, we'll respond to you on the chat box as we take um, other, other um, we'll respond to you on the chat box as we take other things we have on the agenda of today's meeting. So please, we'll be moving back to the presentation. All right, so we have explained the conversion from the old to the new banking professional examination syllabus. And like I mentioned, we have fully taken into cognizance all student members who have either one subject left, either in the, in the chartered banker level or the intermediate level, as well as those who have more than two left. So the tables, they are very clear. You can use the tables to map yourself and get to know the subjects you'll be required to write. Now, there are some of our candidates who have academic qualifications or experiences which will make them get further exemptions aside what they would have left using the table I just um, explained. That is to say, there are some of you who will be on this call or who have outstanding courses that have gone ahead to take further qualifications or either by experience in terms of your going by the practitioner's route or you have gone through another academic qualification that you can get further exemption. I would explain that. But the table I just explained is a general table to know how many subjects you have left. So using the table, you would be able to find out if you have two or three more subjects left, if you have two, three, or more, three or four more modules left. And then you also find out that for everybody who has not completed the examination, as at 
April would then be required to go through the experiential. So you will not be saying, I, I, I don't need to write the experiential. As long as you've not completed, you must write, go through the experiential learning model. So becoming a chartered banker. Of course, if you're a student member, it means you have started your journey to becoming a chartered banker. For those of you who have previously processed and gotten exemptions, please note, that the exemptions you processed, they were fully based on the old syllabus. The consideration for giving you those exemptions was based on the old syllabus. So it means that you would not say, I've applied for exemption in the past, so why do I have to apply again? I'll explain that. You will need to apply again if we need to consider you for the new modules because the consideration given in the past was for the old subjects. So when you submitted your CV, when you, when you submitted your academic qualification, we're looking at it considering the old syllabus. Where you qualify for additional exemption, you need to apply for additional exemption. What is exemption in the first place? Exemption is a waiver or exclusion from writing some subjects that you have previously written or passed while acquiring other qualifications. So if you have finished mapping using the, the table I explained, you may be qualified for additional exemptions. It means you would apply for that. I will explain further. We'll move on to the next table, which is the examination fee. Of course, if we get to the ex examination fee, it is for those who have uh, successfully um, determined how many subjects they have how many modules they have left. So from the number of modules they have left, they could then decide if you have, you have for one subject, you have for two subjects, you have for three. Remember that when combining your modules, you need to look at the timetable. The timetable is available on the website. Ensure that there is no clash. So if you're picking um, a module on that chartered banker, you find out what time am I required to write this? Is there a clash? If there is a clash, you need to drop it and pick modules that there will be no clash. So the timetable is available as much as possible. It has been prepared in such a way that there is no clash for core subjects, core modules. So you need to look through it, confirm the time and the date when you'll be writing these modules before registering. Now I'll move on to the route to banking professional certification. And this also goes with the exemptions, the applicable exemptions. We have the regular route, which is um, those from HND, um, university degree, recognized professional qualification. What this means is that using the new syllabus, if you're coming in, if this is your first time of writing the exams, or if you have written the exams in the past, there are exemptions that we have aligned for those who have first degree, those who have different professional qualifications. So as you register as a member of the institute, a student member of the institute, the next thing you would do would be to apply for exemptions. When you apply for exemption, you send your CV, you would also send a copy of your professional and academic qualification. You send that to us and then we'll profile you and tell you the exemptions that you are eligible for. We cannot list out the exemptions here because there are different exemptions for different professional qualification, different professional bodies. When you send it to us, we'll profile you and treat all cases individually. And we have to mention that all cases are treat, treated differently because you may have a BSc in banking and finance and another person would have BSc in banking and finance as well as MSc in banking and finance. What that means is that the person would get additional exemptions aside what a BSc in banking and finance would ordinarily give the person. So when you have registered as a student member, you need to send in your CV as well as your academic and professional qualifications to the exemptions desk. We have another uh, slide where we'll share the email address you have to send it to and they'll respond to you, profile you, and let you know the exemptions that you are qualified for using the regular routes. 
Now, we move on to the practitioner's route. For the practitioner's route, the governing council has approved an additional level of it. So we have the senior uh, level, which is for those who have 15 years experience and above. And then we have those who have 10 years experience to 14 years and 11 months. So if you have that, you enjoy generous exemptions as much as seven exemptions out of the 13 you're required to write. But of course, you need to send your CV and your academic and professional qualification to the exemption email. I will share a dedicated email address that we have for that, for that purpose. You need to send it and they'll profile you, re respond to you. If you're going by the practitioner's routes, you need to send your employment letter because we are going to validate that you have spent 10 years in the industry. We need to validate that you have spent 15 years if you're going by the senior practitioner route. We need to validate that and then respond to you. When you have gotten a response, you can go on to make payment for exemptions and then to, it will ap apply on your statement of results. You will then be required to write the remaining subjects, which would be in some cases seven, in some cases six, and then the experiential learning module. Remember that these are different routes, which can also be combined. By combined, I mean you could have a BSc in banking and finance and say you want to combine the regular route and the practitioner's route because you have spent over 10 or 15 years in that industry. Then we have the linkage route, which is the regular linkage and the integrated linkage. We have the bank academy. What we do is that we have accredited a number of bank academies and they have generous exemption. If you went through first academy, you have the exemption that apply for you having gone through Frost Academy. If you went through Access Bank School of Excellence, you have the exemptions that apply for you. So any bank academy that you have gone through, there are exemptions that apply for you. When you apply as a student member, once you're done with that, you're sending your document, you send your bank academy certificate alongside. So you can get the exemptions that apply for those who have gone through the bank academy. Then of course we have the Chartered Banker MBA route, which is a program that confers on you three qualifications, which is the ACIB Bangor, sorry, the ACIB Scotland, more, that is the Chartered Banker status, and then the MBA Bangor. So if you choose to go through that route, you won't have to write the regular examinations, you register for it. And then at the end of that CPM Chartered Banker MBA program, you have the three qualifications conferred on you. Now, if you choose to go through the certification route, interestingly, Governing Council approved generous exemptions for those who have gone through the microfinance certification program. So it means that you can get as much as five exemptions having gone through that program. What you need to do is to send your documents to the exemptions email again, which I will share at the end of this presentation, as well as, well as your certificate of completion for the MCP program and then you enjoy that exemption. Remember that applying for exemption does not automatically mean that you have gotten the exemption. You need to have made payments and gotten a confirmation that your exemption has been processed and it will be reflected in your statement of results. We are saying this for those who would make payment for 5,000 and apply for exemption and not get a response or make payment for the full subject that they have gotten exemptions for and claim that they have processed exemption. If you have applied, applying does not mean you have completed the process. It is just the start of the process. Okay, so I've explained that. I'll move on to, please, as this is going on, kindly drop your comments in the chat box. Be rest assured that we will respond to all the, the questions, all the concerns that have been uh, that you put on the chat box. My colleagues on this call, I have uh, Mrs. Linda Daniel, FCIB. I have Mr. Moshud Afolabi. And we have um, Ms. Adeshola Onabanjo. She's also on the call. They'll be responding, taking your responding to your questions on the chat box while this presentation is going on. So this is an op important opportunity for you to get answers to your questions on the call. If you have any question, kindly share them 
on the chat box. I move on to membership of the institutes. I'm sharing this for those who are not members, who are on the call, or who would need to convince or speak to their uh, colleagues to become members. We have different levels of membership. We have the student member. The student member is somebody who registers and makes payments for the 8,500 as a student member. So you become a student member, you can go on to write the exams. We have the microfinance certified banker. That is someone who has completed the microfinance program. We have the associate member. Associate member is someone who has completed the, the banking professional examination. That is the diploma, intermediate and chartered banker level and has been inducted. That you, if you have completed and you're yet to be inducted, you are not an associate member yet. You shouldn't identify as an associate member. When you are inducted, that's when you can identify as an associate member. We also have the honorary senior member. We have the honorary fellow, and we also have the fellow. Of course, we have another leg of membership, which is a corporate membership, which has to do with institutions. Thank you. We'll move on to the next slide. What are the benefits of being a professional member? So some people would say, why can't I just be in the bank? Why do I have to be a professional member? And we have listed a number of reasons why you should be. It enhances your professional career advancement as a key qualification required for most of the job roles in the banking and finance industry under the competency framework document has been incorporated in this program. Like uh, Mrs. Linda Daniel mentioned in the beginning, we went through a number of processes to ensure that this syllabus is enriched. And this syllabus covers the skills and the competencies that are required for the 21st century banker. So if you go through the program, it enhances your knowledge. There is no way that you would say you remain at the same knowledge um, space from when you started the program to when you completed the program. And of course, in the course of doing the program, you are able to network and get connected to a large community of over 135,000 banking and finance professionals. You need to be very active on the call. We have a number of programs, statutory programs, free programs that you can be involved in. We have the annual lecture. We have the banking and finance conference. We have the seminar on banking and allied matters for judges. We have a number of programs. We have the even program for people who want to venture into entrepreneurship, different programs, different training programs that have been designed for people who are professional members. Now we also have um, those who want to be part of this program would also have the right mix of experience, skills and knowledge that employers are looking for. Of course, you get an opportunity to get international recognized certification. It will interest you to know that the CIBN is not just the local champion. The CIBN is a fundamental part of banking in the African space, and as well as the global space. CIBN has gotten a number of strategic collaborations with industry experts, and we have a lot of certifications and programs that we have doled out that we are even in partnership with. So going through the program means that you become a globally certified member, which means that you can play in any space. If you present the ACIB certificate, you are able to get a number of exemptions for other programs as well, like the CIMA program. Using the ACIB, you get generous exemptions. It shows you the quality of the content of the program. You can also receive continuous professional development. And that applies to those who have completed the program before the new syllabus. They are not left out. We have prepared a number of CCPD programs where they can take and reskill and get to be at par with those who are causing number of uh, innovative and disruptive changes in the industry. So even if you have completed before now, you are not left out. We have CCPD programs that will cover you. And that is the benefit of being a professional member. Then you have access to world-class taught leadership materials. Some of you who do not know, we have a learning center in Yaba and it's fully operational. So you can go there 
and also assess physical materials. You can also log in and also assess e-material. So being part of CIBN is a huge um, step in the advancement of your career. So if you're part of CIBN and you have not taken advantage of all of these things we have, the CCPD program, the CIBN e-learning, you have not gone through any of them, kindly take advantage of it. We are going to be sharing links on the chat box as well as at the end of this presentation. Of course, it's also an opportunity to be mentored. For those of you who are not aware, we have the mentoring scheme. Please go through the CIBN website. There are a number of very wonderful community uh, engagements, a number of things that you can take part of. And for some of you that are asking, do we have materials for the new level? The answer is yes. I'm sure you're excited by that news. The answer is yes, we have materials for the new syllabus which have been uploaded on the website and you can assess that. Okay, so we'll move on to the next. Okay, I'm going to be concluding with this, that you can never change things by fighting the existing reality. So if you want to sit back and say, okay, no, I'm not going to use my phone. I'm, 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 not, I'm not going to use my phone. I, I insist on using the landline. I'm not going to use the internet. I insist on using the regular um, letter. You're going to be phased out. And you shouldn't be fighting the existing reality, the new the innovations that are coming into the industry. We should be flexible, stop fighting it. To change something, we build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And that is basically what the CIBN has done. We have the new structure, the new structure that, that takes into cognizance everything that the 21st century banker requires. And so we urge you to come on board. Go through the syllabus. You can see that it is enriched. The syllabus is rich. Where you, where you, if you're looking at fintech, that is the in thing. The syllabus shows you all of these things and you should take, learn them, go through the materials. Interestingly, we also brought out this material so that it's easier for you to prepare for the examinations ahead of even the registration. So you have it on the site. I will share with you how to assess the material for some of you who have not gotten that. We'll share it with the CIBN Lagos branch so that you can um, also have access to it. The CIBN website is on your screen now. Um, you have um, www.cibng.org. The email address is also on your screen. For those who have um, questions on membership registration, please, the email address is members at cibng.org. Additionally, I want to inform all the members on this call that we have done a review at the Capacity Building and Certification Division. We have done a review and we have members of staff who have been required and directed, mandated to man these email addresses. So if you have sent a mail before now and you have not gotten a response, we rest assured that you will get a response because we have a mandate to ensure that people get responses to their emails not more than 48 hours after they have sent the mail. So if you sent a mail before now, kindly uh, ensure that you're sending to the right mail. You have the email for members at CIBNG. If you have any question that borders for membership, you want to register, you don't know, maybe you have a, uh, an issue registering, send the mail to members at CIBNG.org. You have a question on exemption, you want to know how many subjects you would get, you are qualified for, you want to send your documents, send it to exemption at cibng.org. And you can send it anytime from now, but your responses will count from Monday. Though we have a, a dedicated staff who would be working to ensure that all the responses that we get, all the uh, questions and inquiries we get are answered within 48 hours, what, using the Monday to Friday working um, time. Yes, then we would also say that uh, for examination, if you want to register for the exams, if you have any question on the examination, you need to go by the exams at cibng.org. Then if you have any question on 
student affairs. Student affairs is general. You could copy student affairs when you're sending your mails that has to do with exemption or that has to do with exams. You have any question, maybe you have um, processed your exemption before now and you have further questions in terms of additional exemption, in terms of uh, induction, when it will induction be, in terms of I've completed, what can I do, what's the next step? You send the mail to student affairs at cibng.org. Then we have the contact person because the calls will be taken from working hours Monday to Friday between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. You can, there's a, the phone number on your screen for LACA 0812329 You can call and then she will direct, if there are questions that border on exemption, she will direct, direct you on how to uh, send your mail to the, the exemption email or how to get it attended to. If there are questions that border on exemption, she would also direct you on examination. She will give a general uh, direction on what to do. Okay, so um, that explains it for the mapping as well as how to um, generally contact the CIBN. So thank you so very much. Um, I don't know what the structure is. I'll, I'll then have to hand over to the CIBN branch uh, that will be coordinating the uh, question and answer session while we respond to all the questions on the chat box. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mebe and Linda as well. Thank you very much for this robust uh, knowledge. And I'm sure by now you have uh, uh, bridged a lot of uh, knowledge gap that we have, that the students have it in respect of the new syllabus. This presentation is very insightful and uh, we really enjoyed it. On, the, on our next program, it's all about the CIB Lagos Branch Tuition Center. And uh, from there, we also talk about the uh, answer the un unanswerable question. This will be handled by one of the member of the Education Subcommittee. That's the person of Mr. Pascal Nzoromotu, FCIB. Mr. Pascal, you are welcome. Thank you, Kunle. Um, I, I don't think I need to to uh, stress it again that um, that uh, CIB and Lagos branch is the answer to unanswered questions. This robust um, presentation this morning was put together by the Education Committee of um, the uh, CIB and Lagos branch. And I want to specifically thank the uh, uh, Mebel Opaifi and uh, Linda for this uh, wonderful presentation. Honestly, uh, this has been a problem uh, with the candidates. A lot of candidates have been going through uh, these problems until this morning that you guys have put uh, a, a thrown a light to, to the problem. Another thing is, it's not just only the, the candidates, even most of us, the fellows and the associates uh, would want to equally learn and this morning we have uh, we've learned a lot from these uh, presentations. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is to carry on the gospel to other other uh, uh, to other candidates that were not part of this. However, I am here to take uh, the topic uh, CIB and Lagos branch answer to unanswered questions. Of course, this one, these questions that you had before that you could not answer. Right now, uh, they've been able to uh, answer the question. And uh, coming, bringing it down home, for you to write these exams, for you to put yourself together and write these exams, uh, it's not just something you have to sit at home. Most people are still in this platform today because when they were asked to write these exams, they kept procrastinating or probably went to uh, tuition centers that did not do much on, their, on, on what they were supposed to use in writing the exams. I mean, the, to acquaint them with enough uh, knowledge and information on how to write the exam. Now, but uh, CIB and Lagos branch is a subset of the National Institute, the Chartered Institute of Bankers of 
Nigeria. Uh, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ the, uh, said that um, if you want to go to the Father, you go through him. And they know when Jesus Christ uh, is uh, the Son of God himself, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and if Jesus is the Son of God, once you go to Jesus Christ, it will be very easy for you to see God. Unlike trying to go through uh, Joseph, James, and Peter. That's how it is with the National Institute and Lagos Branch. Lagos Branch is a son of Chartists of Bankers of Nigeria. And because it's a son, you don't have to leave the son and try to go to uh, uh, James and John. Because you know if you go to James and John, they want to go to Jesus first before they get to God. So uh, uh, in our institute, we provide, we prepare candidates for these exams. We prepare candidates for all the exams, all the models that have been uh, mentioned this morning, all the uh, courses that have been mentioned this morning, all the uh, topics that have been mentioned, all of them we prepare candidates for, for these exams. And what you just need to put to put your head and go with this morning is that Lagos branch has a tuition center that prepares you adequately for this course, for these courses. We'll prepare you whether it's a chartered banker level, the intermediate level, the, uh, uh, the microfinance certification, name it. We prepare candidates for all these courses. What we just need to do is for you to reach out to Lagos branch and then be able to prepare yourself well for these courses. Like I mentioned before, some people that were asked to write these courses last two diets or something before the new syllabus, most of them said, ah, no, I will wait. While most of them went to wrong places and they did not prepare well and probably they failed and they had to carry over. Now, for people that have only, let's say, ITF, they are now going to write other courses. Imagine if they had passed ITF that time, you know, now they wouldn't have written all these courses. And again, mind you, in the next five years, we are expecting another review. So that time, if someone still has ITF outstanding, for example, if the person may be asked to write seven more courses because, you know, uh, uh, technology is evolving every day. And challenges of Bankers of Nigeria must move with time. We cannot continue to wait for those people that decided not to move with time. We cannot continue. What we just need to do is to update them. And because we have to update them, these courses that they are supposed to write, uh, they must write. That's one. So, and uh, in this uh, Lagos branch, we have um, the uh, we have available uh, infrastructures you can use. We have uh, we are online real time. You can take your exams, you can take your lectures from anywhere. You can take from Burkina Faso, you can take from Ghana, you can take from Sokoto, you can take from Moduguri, you can take from Imo. All parts of the world, provided you are part and parcel of CIB Lagos branch, you can take your lectures from anywhere. So I want to crave your indulgence. Be part and parcel of Lagos branch because it, honestly, you, we, you, uh, people have never had this time, this kind of opportunity for people to talk to them in this line. So we, we expect that uh, the bankers, the bank academies that are here, and that even the bankers that are here will identify with uh, Lagos branch. And let, let me tell you again, by the time they prepare you for these exams, the next thing they will do is they will set questions, mock questions. These mock questions will be in line with what you've been taught and the new syllabus, the syllabus itself. By the time they said this, it will be all not the same thing, a prototype of the real exam they are going to face in Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, the, your, your exam. So when you have that kind of test, and then eventually you have been able to ascertain that, look, these are the problems I, I experienced during the mock. Uh, these are the places I need to put my, my ass together. And then at the end of the day, when you write the exam, you find yourself coming out uh, uh, successfully. So that is just one part of it. And then the, if you want to visit the branch anytime, any day, we have our available um, 
uh, our available uh, uh, parking spaces where you can you can park your cars. And we are equally involved in training and consultancy. In case you have uh, your, in your bank or you have in your office where, where you need uh, training and consultancy, you need us to come and train you in one or two things. Uh, Lagos Branch, um, Lagos Branch CIBN uh, will always be ready to, to answer your questions and uh, provide the necessary trainings. We have, we have qualified tutors, we have qualified resource people that can take care of whatever your needs are at any given time. We have qualified people who can be your chance to say that these people are qualified to take care of us when what in uh, uh, in any knowledge that we may require. Then um, I, I, I would always also want to bring to your notice. Uh, I think Mabel, I was expecting that Mabel would um, touch that area, which is um, our proctoring, our online proctoring. I think um, uh, uh, since she did not mention it, I'm sure she's going to probably add it to whatever she has. That um, this uh, CIBN is going into uh, a situation where candidates will not need to bother them, themselves going to different uh, uh, lecture centers or lecture exam centers to write, where this proctoring will allow you to write your exam from the comfort of your home, but with with a uh, very serious uh, invigilation in quote so to say with a uh, very serious monitoring uh, that's the another one and lagos branch has equally uh, is equally going to be involved in that kind of thing very soon i'm sure by next by next diet we are going to deploy uh, this particular uh, model too that will be able to allow you write your mock exams from your from the comfort of your homes, so that when you now face real CIBN exams, it won't be a problem anymore to you because you are used to it. Wherever you know you are, you will be able to correct and have your and have your uh, you have your um, uh, and do, your, do yourself good by correcting yourself uh, appropriately. Uh, I, I, I will just give only ten minutes for this, and um, I think let me just touch the competency framework too that every banker in 2012 central bank of nigeria came up with the competency framework in the banking industry number one from the trainers and then to the trainees the trainers whoever is going to train anybody in the banking industry must possess the competency framework uh, uh, certification you must be a certified trainer central bank uh, asked CIBN to handle the competency framework uh, 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 job so that anybody that must train anybody in the banking industry must have gone through central bank, must have gone through CIBN uh, competency framework um, exams so that anybody that wants to train you must have been certified by CIBN to show that these people, this person must uh, 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 possess this to be able to to be able to train anybody in the banking industry. So please do not accept trainings anyhow, because that's what makes people fail. So please accept people from the qualified people uh, that have the competency framework uh, certification from the CIBN, from the Times of Bankers of uh, Nigeria. Now to reach out to the CIBN Lagos branch, you can call BC, BC is the uh, program coordinator on 070-461-82503. I repeat it, BC on uh, 0704-618-2503. Again, you can reach the branch controller, Mr. Kunle, uh, Adefua FCIB on 070-325-97200. I repeat the uh, phone number, 070-325-97200. These people will guide you on how to register your exams, how to 
obtain your exam your uh, study materials your, your study packs and then how to write the exam finally please uh, on that note i want to wish you well those that are going to write the april diet you need to start reading now and then i want to wish you well that at the end of the day you are going to come out in flying colors thank you and god bless you thank you very much uh, mr pasca Thank you very much. Okay, the next on the agenda is question and answer. I think uh, the we've been seeing a lot of chats. Question, question on the chat, which has been answering, but we can just give room for just for five people just to ask a question. And please, let's the, any question that you know that has been answered on the chat in order to save the time. Let's just uh, don't bother to ask it again. Number one, I have uh, Mr. Muyola Dele that's been raising his hand, then followed by Ima Okelu, then Rachel Olashupo, and the Oye Banjo Oluwa Shemilore. So, Mr. Muyola Dele, you can mute yourself and ask a question. Mood. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Yeah. I'm Muywa Oladele, FCIB. Um, I thank the branch and the national for coming together, I mean, for organizing this uh, wonderful uh, webinar. So as a lecturer too, I have gained a lot this morning. So my questions are just some fundamental uh, issues because I also lecture at the university. So I want to confirm the linkage program. Thank God we have Linda and some other guys from National on the platform. How do we establish a linkage uh, program with our banking and finance uh, departments? Because we've done that of ICANN successfully, and uh, it was wonderful. So today, CIBN is uh, you know side by side with uh, ICANN. But I can assure us that ICANN is doing some wonders. With what I witnessed at the, during the program, it, they came to a pair to organize a wonderful program. You know, they, hold, they invited the VC and the top officers of the university. They brought souvenirs, they brought materials, they brought speakers from ICANN head office. It's a cash, I mean, cash them young uh, program. And thereafter, they donated books, a lot of materials, very load of books, you know, ICANN parts, Pathfinder for revision, everything that covers all the levels. They equip the university library. They also equip the uh, departmental uh, library. I want to know whether we have this kind of program. Because we're in the process now. We decided I want to write. We have a professor of finance with us currently from LASU, Professor Ashamu is a member. So and when they came, when I came for the accreditation, it was headed by a professor from Bangkok to lead the accreditation team for our ICANN uh, program. It was wonderful. You know, it's so detailed that, you know, the professor was asking us questions. Even he has to go through the projects, student projects, final year projects. They reviewed so many things. You know, people came from the head office and the professor was the head. And that's how it is being done in ICANN as of now. And we are side by side with ICANN. So we have to brace up in some uh, areas, fundamental areas. Then again, if we say that uh, materials are available for the new syllabus, it should be made available in parts also. I can have all these parts. Even Pathfinder is made available. Revision text of 10 years ago. They have it printed. Students pay for it and they, 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 get, they get started. In class now, they, they disturb me a lot. I lecture for CIBN as a fellow. Every time they will ask me for materials. Where is the material? You say it's on the website. Thank God. You have the material for the new syllabus. Beautiful. So I have the questions. I have answers to those questions now that are bothering uh, my mind. But going forward, this should be made available in text also. Textbooks for students to see. And again, since we started some courses now, some courses were converted to multiple choice uh, questions where you use a uh, CPT method, computer-based test and all those stuff. We stopped giving out uh, examiner reports and for revision for students. You no, know, if this could be reviewed, we, won't have, we don't need to hide information from these students. We are preparing them to qualify in good time and uh, become, uh, become uh, world, uh, world leaders. So these are the areas I want to make a contribution this uh, morning and uh, thank you very much and god bless us all okay, thank you mr Olade. okay 
uh, Rachel Olashupo. Let's just ask uh, answer the, uh, ask the question together so that in order to save time, because our program is supposed to finish by 11. And please, for those other people that, we, that we won't have time to ask the question again, please kindly you send your chat, your question to the chat, or you can as well send it to the coordinator on 0704. 618-2503 so that they can answer the question. But let's still give one or two people more uh, time to ask the question. Rachel Olashupo. Okay, Ima, Ima Okelu, are you there? Okay, okay I recognize the, the, uh, the director for membership. That's the person of Mr. Akimurakinyo, ACIB is raising his hand. Mr. Akimurakinyo, you can take the floor, sir. Oh, okay, good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you for this wonderful privilege, uh, but not to interrupt the question and answer session. I was raising my hand so I can um, um, uh, address the questions or the comments of the last speaker. So let me keep- Please go uh, ahead, sir. Go ahead, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Ah, okay. All right, let me start by congratulating the Lagos State Branch for this novel idea of educating the public on what we do. And I think this is a very commendable exercise. I, I have also benefited from the proceedings and I want to thank all the organizers, including the chairman of the branch, Mr. Peter Shade, and uh, the branch coordinator, uh, Mr. Kunadi Fuwa, as well as others, and especially our audience, because this was this exercise will be exercised in futility if you are not here. So we appreciate you. And I'd like to thank the last speaker. Although I was struggling to get um, uh, the name of your institution where you lecture, uh, thank you for those comments and observation made. But just to throw more light, uh, and I'm drawing my bearing from that statement that the Institute needs to do more, needs to do this. I want to say ex all you have said that ICANN is doing, um, especially in the area of linkage, in the area of um, accreditation, I was struggling to find out what um, ICANN is doing that we don't do. So I see that there's clearly a communication gap. And um, I also do not know if you are very close to Lagos branch because I, I am very much familiar that some of our resource persons who um, we engage when we go on the accreditation exercise to universities, some of them are also members of the Lagos branch. And uh, Mr. Robert Naji is also on this call. Good morning, daddy. And uh, he can testify to what I'm saying. Anytime the Institute is going for accreditation visit, it is usually led by high power delegation, both people in practice and in academics. And uh, everything you have described is, I'm, I'm struggling to find out what is new, we do them. So I think um, the, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, if you also, um, Mr. Defua will make my number available and uh, we also, so need to move closer to the institute so we can get a hang of what is going on. In terms of donation of books, last year we gave out books to several institutions across the north. And to even cap it off, we have just started what we call the legacy project where we are constructing buildings for institutions. And that started last year. So there's a lot that is going on, um, which perhaps you may not be aware of. And uh, to also let you know that we have current, we have linkages with higher institutions in Nigeria, 68 of them. So there's process to these things. And that's why I'm saying I didn't pick the name of your organization, of your institution. Um, Lagos branch, for instance, is involved in a lot of catch them young programs. So what we do is we will synergize with you. We'll get the name of your institution and um, see how we can link up with you. Of course, so as part of the linkage program is that we will visit, we will accredit your courses and then harmonize our curriculum. And on that basis, we consummate a linkage agreement and all these things we naturally follow. And so just to educate people on this platform that we are doing loads of things, but if you don't, you are not close to us or you are not visiting the website or you are not 
participation activities of the institute, you may not know. And so I just thought I should hint that so that people don't go with wrong impression. There is process, there's a whole division handling linkage. And that's my division working with, um, with the, with the um, examinations, capacity building and certification division. And so I would be glad to work with you, but not to say that we are behind. We are certainly not behind. I mean, fact speaks for itself. I just thought I should uh, mention that so that people don't go off the platform with wrong impression. Just last year, we have six linkage institutions that we are building, constructing a uh, hall for, or fully furnished. And those halls will be delivered this year. We had the groundbreaking ceremony last year and a host of other things. Even these uh, past questions, we have them. It was popular demand from our stakeholders that made us go on digital because we understand that is the vogue. So if the same stakeholders are now saying, okay, go back to pen and paper, no wahala. But to say that we are moving with the trend and we are not behind, just I thought I should clarify. Thank you, Mr. Defua, for giving me that audience. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, Mr. Marakio. I believe uh, Mr. Muiwaladele's question has been answered. And uh, like you said, we, we discussed with Mr. Muiwaladele. Mr. Muiwaladele is one of our lecturers and used to be one of our past uh, ESCO members. So okay. there's no problem. We can get in touch with him. And, uh, Thank you very much. Close all the gaps. Okay, uh, let's just, uh, this is past 11 now. Let's just give Volangle Ogunri Ola just question. Any other people that ask question, please kindly send it to the chat or to the WhatsApp number so that it can be answered. Thank you very much. Volangle Ogunri Ola, can go ahead. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning, sirs. Good morning, Maz. Uh, my name is Volangle Ogunri Ola. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to the CIBN team, uh, most especially the lecturers who has been taking us all this while. Well. Piece, it has been very, very detailed, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, just to also mention, I also want to say a big thank you to my organization, Wema Bank. I've been in so many banks, and the emphasis of CIBN has not been there, but Wema Bank really pushed and made me to go for it. Uh, right to my question, I, I am one of the uh, students that are not pleased with this new syllabus. As at the last uh, syllabus, I only have one course or one subject left. Now coming back to say that I have three, honestly, if you ask me, sir, it's actually unfair. I've actually done this exam twice. I don't know why I failed it. However, now knowing that one course will now make me to do three courses. A lot of people have decided to abandon the CIBN because somebody that has five is asked to do 10 now. But coming to myself from one exam to three, it, it sounds so, so unfair. Confirming that I've actually done it twice before. And to my question, I don't know if there is any exception that can be done, even if this three can be reduced to two. It's still, to me, it's still quite uh, considerable compared to from one subject to three subjects. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Balale. Let me just, uh, uh, the director, please, can you answer this question for us, please? Mr. Akimorakio. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'll, it will be my pleasure to answer this question. Although my colleagues who spoke earlier, they have spoken to it, but strictly speaking to, the question of um, the last speaker, and I'm sorry I didn't pick your name. I'm sorry. Well, but, I'm uh, Ola. Okay, Mr. Boyanliogunriola from Wema Bank. Thank you for being open and um, and e expressing your dissatisfaction. But be that as it may, we know that um, we live in a world that is guided by principles. Uh, now, when you talk of principles, uh, there's little or nothing you can do to change a principle, whether you know it, whether you do not know it, whether you believe it, whether you practice it or not. One of such principles is the law of gravity. Whatever goes up must come down. Whether you know it, whether you believe it, it stays and it operates. Now, 
why am I using that example? Whatever we are doing, it's not that CIBN wants to make you unhappy or wants to frustrate you. Whatever we are doing takes its root and can be verified all over the world. Um, the question I would like to ask is this, were you aware that the old syllabus was going to lapse? Hello, madam. And let me not also personalize, let me speak generally. Oh yes, I am aware, sir. You are aware, good. Fully aware, I'm I tried my best. I was fantastic. shocked that I killed it the second time. No, fantastic, that's where I'm going to. That the Institute is mindful of the fact that some people are on this program and the expiration of that syllabus means that we are facing out that particular syllabus. And once the new one takes over, he overrides the former one to the extent that the Institute also gives one year, a one year period where both syllabus will run concurrently, giving notice to those who are currently on that syllabus to pass out. Now, in the event anyone is unable to finish along with that syllabus, this is what happens technically. Now, the current syllabus, let's say hypothetically, I, I want to make it simple so you can understand. If he has 10 subjects, what we'll do is that effective from this year, 2022, when you pick a transcript of any graduate, anyone who qualifies in CIBN, you must see those 10 courses on it, either as a pass or as an exemption. So what has become of it now? The new syllabus came, of course, if you are saying we have a new syllabus and it doesn't come with anything new, what's the value of changing? So the essence of changing is to be, to move abreast with time, to introduce new things which with time has come up. And so you find out new courses like digital skills, all those new things that came up have been infused into the syllabus. And so, the basis for exemption, like you were told during that presentation by Mabel, is that you must show evidence of having passed that particular subject in any academic environment or a professional environment that is recognized and accredited. So once you can produce, you can show that these courses that they're asking you to write, you have written and passed them somewhere else, and we accredit those sources. Why not? You will be exempted. But the problem now is that your transcript will carry those 10 new courses and it must be either a pass or an exemption. How do you do it? And that is why those courses are increasing. So it is not as if we're insensitive. It is not as if uh, we want to strain you, but it is a principle in the academic environment which we, CIBN, can now not isolate itself from. Once there's a new syllabus, it overrides the previous one. And what CIBN has done in its own wisdom is to, show, to ensure that we give a, moratorium, moratorium, a period of moratorium where everybody, and we popularize this thing, we, we make a lot of noise about it because we know the implications. This is not the first time the syllabus is expiring and people are inheriting new one. I mean, it, it, it's happened like two, three times in my own presence. And so my appeal, will simply be that um, let's uh, do whatever we can do, working with the CIBN Lagos State Branch to put you through proper tutelage to ensure that uh, you write the exams in one sitting and then you pass. But whatever we are operating is not local to CIBN, is what obtains nationally, internationally, even in the academic circle. So it is not as if CIBN is doing his own rule and making life difficult for people, no. So I know and I identify with your feeling, one who has just one paper to pass, now it has increased to three. It's quite unfortunate, but again, we've got to satisfy the requirements because on your transcript, you can't give you the old transcript, is the current one you will take. And those subjects are already listed. 
And so what do we put there? Is it a pass or an E or a dash? And that's it. So until those columns or those spaces are filled, you may not have been said to have been completed. I understand it may be difficult, but please let's bear with us. And um, again, what happened is beyond your control and probably beyond our control because you, you, you thought you'd be able to pass them for, for, for whatever reason that wasn't to be. But not to worry, failure is an, is an opportunity to begin again more intelligently, they say. And I think uh, you should just uh, not um, uh, regress at this point when you are this close to, to, to the Bay. And that would be my advice that let's work with the CIB and Lagos branch team so they can coach you on those areas you probably did not pay attention to. And um, I know you will surely pass and uh, put that behind us. So that will be my explanation at this time. If you want further engagement on this, uh, Mr. Defoe will share my number and we can take it offline. But this will be a general position of things. I yield the floor to you, Mr. Defoe. And my colleagues from capacity building, they can also add if they have any more to, to add to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, Mr. Marakeo. Okay, if you look at the time now, this is a quarter after 11. With this, okay, Linda, do you have anything to say? To yes, add to what Mr. Marakeo said? Yes, in addition to what Mr. Mar I, was, I wanted to just explain she, that we, were, we gave uh, candidates not even just one year this time around. The, normal, the norm is to give one year, but uh, because of the experiences we had due to the outbreak of the, pandem uh, the pandemic in 2020, we extended this just to show our sensitivity to the realities you know, in, in, in the country. We gave three diets, which is one and a half years for students who have few, very few subjects to complete. So I just wanted to explain this, that we, we, we truly really expect, wanted candidates to bear with us with this, uh, because really we, we, we cannot say we are bringing out uh, professionals if they're not fully professionals because of the current trend, because of the new dispensation. Yes, you may have done and had only one course left. Yes, you have some practical knowledge, However, because of the new things that have come up, we cannot close our eyes to them and say, you have them. We are mandated to ensure that these skills are you know, infused into our knowledge skills. And so if we say we leave this out, then what are we doing? We will be cutting ourselves short and our professionals will be fully bred. So I just wanted to add this, that our members should please, you know, we appeal to you to, to, to try and understand with us and that, um, We'll do our best to ensure that um, every other aspect of the examinations are well give, uh, you, you're giving full knowledge to enable you, you know, skill through. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. Okay, if you look at the time now, we've uh, spent uh, more than uh, 15 minutes of, uh, over the time. And because we have any other programs to do today. So for those who that still have more questions to ask, you can send the question to the chat or you send it to the WhatsApp group of, uh, for the CIB and Lagos branch and uh, you get a response to your answer. The number again is 0704-618-2503. Just send a WhatsApp group and definitely you get a response. Okay, the, the, we just need to wrap up the program. So we're calling uh, the treasurer for CIB and Lagos branch, the person of Mr. Robert Inaji, FCIB to give us a wrap up and closing remark. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kule Adefua. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as a last count, can you hear me, please? As a last count, I the number went up to 94. So this program was so well attended and that underscores the importance of this program. I want Wait, to begin by- sir, For your information, sir, for your information uh -huh. at the point, it got, it got to 103. Oh, 103, okay, see what I mean? So, and that is, a, that, that is a measure of the importance of this program. And I want to congratulate Lagos State Branch and the National Secretariat for this uh, wonderful out this morning. Myself have been further well enriched by the program this morning. In fact, I will recommend that this program should go around some other branches other than Lagos branch, because I know that um, 
students uh, all over the country and even beyond have uh, one thing or the other agitating their minds over the new syllabus. I, I listened carefully to what um, Linda Daniel said. She, she dissected the new syllabus and it justified why certain courses have to come in. We want to produce graduates that are up to speed, professionals that are well-rounded. And that is why we have seen all the disruptions in the industry brought about by FinTech and other things. And we cannot pretend not to know that such things are happening. So our graduates have to be updated. And that is what the new syllabus is, is trying to take on, take on, bringing the new skills needed to, uh, to ensure that uh, a professional banker is without blemish and all respect. In fact, after uh, listening to her, I was so impressed that I, I wish I could see the, the, the registrar and the, the entire council and congratulate them for the new syllabus. I think that's the right way to go. So please keep it up. And uh, for Mabel, she nicely explained the mapping of old and new syllabus, which is the thing that she didn't ever always mind. In fact, I, I'm happy one lecturer mentioned here that he himself is even not, uh, he was you know, well uh, enlightened. Even Pascal himself mentioned it. Uh, she nicely explained how you can map subject to subject, level to level, exemption for exemption. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for that wonderful presentation, Mabel. And that's what to keep it up. Like I said, this uh, uh, kind of presentation, uh, Lagos, Lagos State Bank will always uh, face before the rest, but having gotten it now, I think you can go ahead and give it to the rest. It's something that needs to be done. So um, the way you explained it, and I want to ask that you please ensure that this material uh, reaches everyone that participated today, so we can also help to be the vanguard to further disseminate this information. When I was looking, uh, during the course of discussion, uh, some students maybe didn't quite get when you explained about exemption other than only syllables and the new ones. So we are saying that, uh, uh, you said that the, the, the exemption of that old, old syllabus are, is, not valid, is no longer valid. It's not what you said. Please, uh, my colleagues, uh, students, and the uh, Lana, what she said is that if you were exempted under the, uh, under the old syllabus, and with the introduction of subjects into the new syllabus, you may be subject to further exemptions, or you write further exams. Nothing, it, it did not say that the, one, the former exemption had been invalidated. Please take note of that. Another question that was uh, coming in regularly was the issue about uh, materials, study pack, pathfinders. I'm happy you said it's on now, and the lecturer also mentioned, please let us make those uh, uh, study packs, both uh, soft and hard copies, so that it can go around. In fact, uh, because it's a new area, uh, new knowledge is uh, being sought after. So that it is something that should be in the front burner so we can get. I'm happy you said it's there now. So let's share the. Uh, this is very well, we have to get it. Um, let me also use the opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Amrakio that uh, he really found time among his very high schedule to personally attend. And when they started, I didn't know it was that I saw his name. I want to thank you, sir. As a director, so busy, you came to ensure that uh, this program, even though it's not directly under, yeah, this is, that is well taken. And I also, um, for that, I read by the answers you gave to the two questions you took. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And extend our greetings to the Registrar Chief Executive. Um, let me again thank once more all other uh, participants from National Secretariat who have been answering questions quietly, operating. You know, I, I, I can see the synergy, you know, the way you operate, and that shows that National Secretary is really up to speed in this matter. Once more, thank you very much uh, for the new syllabus for this program today. Let me also th thank my first vice chairman, Mr. Duo. He, he was here even before I came in, and he has remained seated since that time, part of all his uh, tight schedule. Thank you very much, sir for sitting in and uh, also I think for the chairman and listening to what we have, have been said here today. Um, and to you, the students, you are the essence of this day. And I believe you are all better informed. Um, give the good news to your colleagues. Uh, I was told that the, uh, the finest furnace come, the, that the finest steel come from the hottest furnace. Don't be afraid to go through the hottest furnace. You will be better for it at the, at the other end. So if you already have one paper as now two or three, you're almost there. Just give yourself a bit of encouragement. And for what has been said here now, uh, you can also have an opportunity of going through your own transcript from school and see whether the subject, the subject is really match 
It could be an it could be exempted. Otherwise, write it. You will get it. Out of 10, you've done seven. Three is cannot, I think it's something that you can go through. I encourage you, based on what was said by the director of uh, membership, that you should please. Uh, it is towards the end that is normally more difficult, but the end is, uh, I mean, the, is in sight. Um, I want to thank uh, CIB and Lagos State Branch, especially Education Committee, the chairman, Mr. DBC, for his uh, uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, I want to thank um, each and every one of us uh, that participated and ask that uh, many more collaborations, programs like this on enlightenment, uh, which we been often. We have began the year on a very sound note, and uh, I believe that uh, it's going, that's a sign of better things to come the rest of the year. Thank you very much, and may God bless, bless uh, CIBN. Thank you, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Inaji, Robert Inaji, FCIB, thank you very much, sir, for the wrap up and closing remarks. I think I you recognize uh, Mr. Alex Ajibo. Can you please give us a closing prayer, Mr. Alex Ajibo? Okay. Um, it's almost afternoon, but I'll still say good morning, everybody. Um, it's really an insightful uh, you know, session. I enjoyed every bit of it, even after coming late. I have made my position known that uh, CIBN is not lagging behind in any way. We, in terms of quantity of uh, cost review, uh, quality and currency, uh, we're even next to none. So uh, I, I've already passed a message on that line. And uh, I want to thank God that brought us together for this program, the God that made it possible to have this program that enriched the knowledge of uh, uh, all the paper presenters in this program and all the speakers, uh, the director from the National uh, Secretariat, uh, Mr. Aki Morakian, uh, the chairman of education committee, uh, Mr. Naji that had just spoken, uh, Kunle himself, the branch controller, Linda and Mabel, I cannot name everybody, but God knows the heart of men. I want God to bless all of us that have participated in this program. And uh, as we pray, the Institute should move to the next level. God, we pray that you should always have your preeminence in whatever we do to position us to where we're supposed to be. And uh, that Lagos uh, branch, for instance, should remain the flagship of the CIBM as a whole. Uh, please God to bless our hands, our brains, so that when we plan, we shall execute. When we execute, we shall control. We make all these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everybody, for this uh, program. You are, you are all welcome. Thank you all. We appreciate you all. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. BC and everybody for putting up the program. We really appreciate you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you, sir, my director. Thank you, branch controller. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mr. Eliza. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, you sir. Everyone. I see you alone. Oh, the mentor, you remember to respond to our questions. Remember to Definitely respond to get, our you questions. Will get thank to you. your question. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Mr. Eliza is still here. Mr. Eliza Cabra Joel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, sir. How is the family, sir? <laughs> we are trying. God bless you and bless you your home. The I wish you the same. Thank you so much, sir. Thank Mr. you. Andrew Jadu. Oh, well, well done. Well done, Pascal. Well done. <laughs> I cite you. I actually heard you talk exhaustively. <laughs>